Oh, hello, it's me, Me Too, from the Me One Vs Me Too podcast. Snooker Whoa, watch out there. Who? you know, just putting in a bit of practice on the old snooker board in the hope that I can beat Me One. I'll, I'll get him one of these days, don't you worry. You know, I just want to tell you, I'm a massive fan of Rahul Estaba. Rahul Estaba, so much I contributed to the last Kickstarter. I got this amazing exclusive T-shirt and this brilliant Rubik's Cube. They're not available anywhere else. And I also did the, oh, Friggin 51 got this amazing, uh, when I buy a bag for life, I think, yeah, probably is bag, not available anywhere else. And, you know, there's a new, brand, brand new kickstart to help the Rahula Stubber podcast, which just doesn't get the kind of money that we do on the Me One Versus Me Two snooker podcast. Uh, and uh, to help film uh, 25 episodes of that. If you like the videos, and I presume you do because you're watching the video now and you want them to carry on, then please contribute whatever you can afford to www.rahulastapa.co.uk slash kickstarter. You can see all the rewards. You can see an exclusive frame with Me One Versus Me Two uh, playing for the Chris Evans Not That One trophy. You can see a documentary about stone clearing. You can get some new fantastic exclusive t-shirts shirts that won't be available anywhere else one for me one one for me too you can only have one of those you have to choose it's me too me too choose me too uh, uh or uh one for stone clearing or one for a if you like that kind of stuff it's not really my deal uh you can also get a stone that's been cleared from the theater from the field up there just outside here it's incredible uh which will be cursed because they're not meant to be removed from the field or you can get your name in the credits of rahalaspa rahalaspa or sponsor a snooker podcast or a stone clearing podcast there's lots of options you can see them all or you can just make a donation if you've enjoyed watching all the videos in the past and you've never donated and you want us to carry on videoing, filming the shows, then please go to rehearsalstubber.co.uk slash kickstarter. You'll be able to see all that's there. We need to raise £50,000. It's a lot of money. So even if you can just give a couple of quid for the entertainment you've had so far this year, that would be terrific. rehearsalstubber.co.uk slash kickstarter. Find out all about the rewards. And then, hey, I better get back to the old green board. Uh, Got to try and beat that me one. Uh, I don't hope he's not around. Where? What's going on? I'm me one. What's happening? Why are you doing this without me? It's just, I, oh, I hate me too. He's an idiot. See you later, everyone. Bye. Welcome to the Bath Comedia. Please welcome a man who saw the great rock and roll swindle in this venue in the early 1980s. It's Richard Herring! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, Bath. Lovely to be here. And uh, welcome to Richard Herring's Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels podcast. Uh, Though I was, I was hanging around at the pump rooms at the Roman baths. <laughs> the other way, it turns out they don't like you farting at all. That's, that's, it's strange, isn't it? They, they dis- especially in the restaurant, they don't like it. Don't call it that, mate. Uh, everyone there calls it Rahulastabas. I don't know if that's going to... I don't know if that's going to catch on. We're in Bath. Uh, it is uh, a wonderful place. One's called Aquasulis, of course. But then in Anglo-Saxon times, it was called Ake Manchester. Did you know that? Because aching men came here to sit in the pool. It's true. Uh, and now it's called Bath, which is a bit unimaginative, isn't it? You can't call a place Bath just because there's a bath in it. That is not how it works. There's a bath in every town. Grow up. Um, got a lot of problems with Bath. I don't like the Bishop of Bath and Wells. Choose one, mate. That's my... Stop being greedy. There's not enough bishops to go around. Don't take up to... Bath and Wells aren't even near each other. Comparatively speaking, uh, Jane, Jane Austen, of course, uh, lived in Bath and wrote two of her books here. You all know that. It's a lot of literary. It's very, it's a very posh place. Not like Wolverhampton, where I was last. It's like, it's like if you could go to the most opposite place. Where, where should we go next? Yes, let's go to Bath next because you won't be able to take the piss out of Irish because it's too nice. Um, Jane Austen, when she heard the moot and knew she was moving to Bath, she fainted on the spot. That is. Uh, that's how <laughs> upset she was about coming here. So, don't know if that's going to work out. Uh, talking to the Roman bars, I did, uh, yeah, I've got this on my phone. I did, um, I just looked on TripAdvisor to see the worst reviews. The, the amazing Roman baths 
in... Oh, shit, I've turned it off. I think I wrote them right in the back. I'll see if that comes back on again. I've, I, I've correctly turned off my mobile phone, forgetting that I had some material on it. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'll read you the, the worst review for the Roman Bass. One star review comes from Stuart from Dagenham. £18 was way too much for a couple of dirty swimming pools. <laughs> it takes about 15 minutes to see the lot should be free. That is, that's, uh, that's your Roman bath, your amazing Roman baths there, bath. No one cares about them. Okay, let's see if I've got this one. Um, this one I, wrote, I, I copied and pasted. Hopefully it's going to be here. Uh, I tried to write a review before, but it was censored as inappropriate. How, how do you write about a place that shows movies with naked people that men come to watch? I consider that place inappropriate. That is the Roman baths <laughs> that they're talking about. Uh, the Roman baths uh, put, actually replied to that one on TripAdvisor. Hello, Mariah. Uh, the Roman baths was a bathhouse in which 2,000 years ago both men and women removed their clothes at certain stages in the bathing process and this is referred to in both the audio and film based explanations presented on site. It's done very tastefully and quite modestly with some clever use of towels <laughs> as it is a popular site for families. Today more women than men visit the Roman baths and the films can be seen by all visitors. So I'm not sure, I mean I think that's actually a selling point. <laughs> 18 pounds. It's quite interesting to go through TripAdvisor and see uh, the one-star reviews and see how the price of the Roman baths has increased quite a lot just in the last three or four years. It was £14.50 people were complaining about three or four years ago. And now it's £18. So uh, do go, though. It's wonderful. And when I was uh, working at a summer school in Oxford, we came here as a day trip and I had about 20 students with me and they'd all paid me their money in advance so I could go and pay for it. And then the woman at the desk said, are they students? And she said, yes. And then I got one pound off for each student and I kept all the money. So thank you for that, Bar. <laughs> kept that 20 pounds there, 20 pounds up. <laughs> so uh, let's move on because uh, we've got a couple of fantastic guests for you tonight. Um, my, my first, my only guest, we only do one a week, as you know. Uh, my, uh, my only guest this week is probably best known for his additional voices in the film The Pirates in Adventures with Scientists. That's why we're here, to hear about those additional voices. Will you please welcome Peter Lord, ladies and gentlemen. And, and a little friend he's got, Peter Lord. Come in, sit down. Sit down on this slightly creased chair from Bath. Hello, Peter. Wonderful to see you. We've Hello. Met, met, met many times, yep. and it's always a delight to be with you. Do you, re do you remember what additional voices you did in yeah, so Pirates' uh, Adventures I, with Scientists? I enacted the role of a um, policeman, right. and I said, uh, mind how you go. I think that was it. <laughs> it's that good. Was it, it saved you playing an actor to do exactly. that, didn't it? That is, exactly. you're always yeah, thinking. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I was determined to get that credit, you know, <laughs> on IMDb. Yeah, it was Actor, that... mind how you go. <laughs> see, yeah. Yep. It's good. It's yep. all good. Well, look, I'm a massive fan of Ardman, as is everyone in the world. Um, and I've been very much enjoying this fantastic new book, uh, Ardman, an epic adventure, taken one frame at a time, which is uh, by and about you and uh, Dave Sproxton, yep. who, uh, who, yep. who, who you set Ardman up yeah. uh, with. When you were very young, I mean, you met David Sproxton when you were, like, kids. Well, yeah, we met when we were 12. Yeah. Yeah, he was at school at... Um, a very old-fashioned boys' grammar school in Surrey, and uh, I'd been living in Australia and uh, for a few years, and came back to Britain and ended up in this school. And the only spare desk in the room was next to Dave Sproxton, Sproxton brackets D A, and um, you know we met then, and, and we're still you know work partners today. So that, incredible. that's not bad, is it? Not bad. I mean, it's sort of way, amazing the way you throw... I mean, we're all thrown together with people and most of them we don't set up yeah. international businesses with. But <laughs> that's there true. aren't many even sort of successful creative partnerships. Like, you know, it's like Eric and Ernie, Morecambe and Wise, yep. when they were very young and worked together and then didn't work for a bit there. Yeah. And I guess Lennon and McCartney who were quite quite young. We're not that young. Yeah, yeah we were uh, so it's, And it's pretty astonishing to... You're still friendly and yes. still working together. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah, it's great. It's lovely. Yeah. And... Um, but in a funny way, like we're very, when we weren't the best of, no, yeah, we were, we were different for each other. They were just, yeah. you know, different. So like we'd, we'd socialise quite differently at school, you know, and stuff like that. But then we had this thing, this this amusing hobby when we were like sixteen. This 
uh, trying animation that was a weird thing to do. You yeah. know, the, the, the most well, it kids were on a kitchen table, basically. This, this. The, the classic British kitchen table. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. In his house, and um, and you know, I, I don't, I don't remember who's even who suggested it. Who who it was that first said, "Hey, you should try animating," but somebody did, and we had the camera, had the kitchen table, and. Uh, and we animated, and, and now uh, it's kind of, it's easy now, I mean, in a good way, like, yeah. like all kids can do it, you know, anyone can do it on their phone, but at the time it was a, it was a strange thing to do, not an, <laughs> not an obvious thing to do, you know, and, um, and we were influenced by, by Terry Gilliam mostly, probably, yeah. you know, the, that uh, stuff in Monty Python and stuff like that, yeah. So we were influenced by that, and uh, and we experimented, uh, and, and um, yeah, it was just for fun. It was just for fun. But but uh, animation, I recommend it really highly to people because there's still a like uh, there's the um, the illusion that it's um, it's it's very hard work and very slow and painful and agonising, all of which it can be in those yeah. days. But um, but it's it's, it's 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 exciting, you know. Yeah. Well, it's that, you know, so it was just a bit of fun that you were having and you obviously didn't anticipate it leading to you having massive studios no. in Bristol no. and making movies and making... No. and going to Hollywood and yeah. all that stuff. No, so it's none quick, of that. No, yeah. so it's a lovely start. And, and you sort of had a, a luckyish break early on. In the, your dad was, uh, was working for the BBC yeah. a little bit. Yeah, he was, yeah. So you were messing yeah. around with stuff and, yeah. Yeah. And, he, and he showed some of the work to, yeah. to a producer at the BBC. Yeah, I, I do think... In, in most of the best stories, there's always a little bit of like nepotism creeps in. I think it should do. So don't feel bad about that, everybody. For, and, um, Unless, you know, it doesn't happen to you, then yeah, you're going to... And Dave's... Dave, it was Dave's dad. The, was both, Dave's both fathers dad. were in the BBC in right. different ways. Dave's dad performed the nepotism and, and put our work in front of the producer of, of a, a program which nobody will know, but it was called Vision On. Oh, was, they it, will know. It was for... <laughs> it was, it well, was look, a, Vision On is one of my absolute... I mean, I don't, I don't remember so much your exact stuff from it. No. It's one of my absolute earliest memories. There's... Because there's, it's... I was, you know, I was born in 67. It must have been okay, coming yeah, out yeah, in the yeah, early yeah. 70s. Yes, it? yeah, yeah. And so I remember that thing that went... That all thing, over the studio. Yes. That was a good thing. Uh, and I remember the, you know, the Vision On frog made out of Vision On yeah. back to front. And uh, the gallery, which we which yeah. we reference a lot in our work later in the nineties, yes. <laughs> although that was mainly from Take Heart as well, which obviously also worked. But on. there was a, yeah, there was a gallery, yeah, and, 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 you know, and all, yeah, there will be a prize for those we, we can't return them, but yeah. there will be the prize for those we show. They used to say, yes. yeah, yeah, and we were lucky, we were, yeah. So we got into that program, um, and because I think you know, basically it was a BBC program for children, and they had a small budget, and they wanted cheap animators. And so two schoolboys were like, you know, perfect. We were really, really, really cheap, and uh, and, it was, and it was, yeah, and and I and we made a film, uh, and the first film is about a character that that we called Ardman, hence hence <laughs> hence the sexy red name there, yeah. and um, and. Um, uh, and it was a little, and Ardman was a superhero sort of character, sort of, and uh, it wasn't very good, but it, it was quite a good story, and just good enough for them to buy it, and then that started the whole thing, I guess. Right. Yeah, and so you named, the, you sort of set, formed a company and named it after this character, yeah. and then never did anything with the, well, did a little bit with the character, but then decided yeah, not to the rest yeah, of the character. Yeah, we discussed, you know, other names, like, like um, you know, like... Uh, Lord and Sproxton. That, you know, Lord, yeah. Lord Sproxton sounds kind of like powerful, you yeah. know. You know, and uh, Pete and Dave, uh, friend, <laughs> friendly, uh, and you know, Super Animation Limited. We discussed all these names, yeah. and then in despair, we chose Ardman. And then for for several years, everyone just said, "Well, that's a stupid name, and you should change it." Right. And I remember, I vividly remember being in a, a room in Bristol with some people. And trying to brainstorm a better name than Art Man, you know, like yeah. you know, Brunel Animations. Well, that's rubbish. But um, uh, Far West Animations and stuff. We tried all these things, yeah. and then in despair, 
We went back to Ardmore. <laughs> Stuck with Ardmore. Yeah. It's at the beginning yeah. of the alphabet. So yeah, if you're doing was... an Edinburgh Fringe show, that's a very good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for naming it. Yeah. But it's sort of, it's lovely the way, and I love the way things are named. And I was talking to Goodies the other week at the Slapstick Festival, which we may talk about. But, you know, they, again, they had lots of choices for the Goodies and they end up with the Goodies. And there's something, you know, about the right name, even if it's not the right name at the time, it becomes the right name. Yes. You know, Ardmore seems such... When you don't know all of that backstory, it just you think, it oh, Arden's good. a great yeah, name. Yeah, it does, yeah. And when you see it now, if I go and see it in, in the movies and in a, in a big cinema and, and the big caption comes on in red, red on black, and I think, whoa, that looks... Wow, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good, you know. And, um, yeah. And then, it's, it, and then it's funny to know inside that it was just a... You know, not even a joke, just less than a joke. A, a, an amusing thing when we were 16, you know, to choose that name. Yeah. It's great. And you obviously are very much associated with the West Country. You're based in Bristol. Yep, yep. And you were born, were you born in Bristol? Yeah, yeah. So you came back to Bristol. You decided to base yourself in Bristol because yep. that's where Vision On was, was produced. Was produced, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, and the minute you based yourself in Bristol, Vision On stopped. stops. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, that's true. Yes, that was a bad day. Yeah, that was, a, yeah, that was, our, that was our, the only, you know, the only gig we had. Yes, the only out there we had. And we'd, we'd, we'd you know, we'd graduated in uh, other things. We didn't, we never studied animation. So we graduated in um, English literature, in my case, and geography, in Dave's case. <laughs> so we were well sorted for, for geography, anyway. And, um, and... Yeah, yeah, so we came to Bristol to set up shop, and then it, immediately that gig was cancelled, which was, a, you know, was terrible. Uh, but then, <laughs> luckily, they brought back the, they, they created um, Take Heart, which was yeah. the Tony Hart program. Yeah, and we and we kept going. Yeah. So they get they let you know, So you had something in Vision on called the Glebies. The Glebies, very good. Yeah. Yes, the Glebies. Yeah, they were like about that big, and they were made of plasticine. And they, they, there were four of them, or five, and they're different colours, and they, and they ran around in a little mob and, and wreaked havoc. And that was, that was, and that's, that was good. You know, yeah. the, and uh, before that, we'd done lots of different sorts of stories, and uh, the producing people said, oh, we love the Glebe, stick with that. And then, um, and, th and then when Take Heart started, it was kind of, what can you do that's like the Glebe's? Yes, so you've got this, you know, you came up with this. Uh, I think, like, again, looking back at childhood figures that I liked yeah. and that, that you remember, and it's that, it's the anarchy, it's the anarchic characters, yes. really. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, it's, I was talking about Zippy to you backstage, Zippy from Rainbow, who I yeah. met as an adult and yeah. was so terrified of. <laughs> I'm in awe of, you know, uh, yeah. even though he was just kept in an Ikea bag, I still... <laughs> but you know he was this anarchic figure yeah. there was Tiz was which is a very anarchic show yeah. and Morph is the same has that same yes. level of Tony Hart was this if, if people don't remember Take Hart some of the youngsters most of you are old uh, <laughs> Tony Hart was, it was like a, a very posh sort of art teacher yeah. um, a quite, quite not pompous exactly but he, was, he had that level of you know he was an authority an yeah. authoritative yeah. figure a very nice a likable man, yeah. but but yeah. You, you needed some kind of naughtiness in there to, for him to play against. And against. Yeah. He needed yeah. a double act partner, and his double act partner was a piece of was, plasticine. Piece of plasticine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just so, yeah, I think so. I think I think the producer thought that Tony was a lovely bloke, which as he is, was as he was, a char you know, charming, but a bit, you know, kind of straight, yeah, a bit straight, serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he was, and I mean, so, he was, yeah. He was, you know, we had we had an art teacher who was a was a female art teacher, but she was very like that same level of, you know, that same sort of slight like, poshness and yeah. art, you know, that 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 level of artiness. Mm. And so yeah, yeah so yeah. Morph is this anarchic character yeah. kind of popping up on his desk and, and yes. creating mayhem. Yeah, yes. Um, and when he first appeared, that was what he did was just create was all making <clears throat> making a mess, you know, knocking over paint and interfering with Tony's artworks. So that that was the that was the idea. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Whether it worked, I don't know. Them. When I look at the, f the first films we did, they look terrible, you know. They really... <laughs> and Morph himself looks terrible. Yes, but, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got, like, um, like Mickey Mouse or like The Simpsons, he's got, he got to look younger o o over, over the years. Yes. He's got, you know, he got, when you first appeared, he's, he's, he's kind of um, like, uh, like Neanderthal Morph. Yes. You know, he's got huge feet <laughs> and, and a, a drooping demeanor. And the small head and the receding forehead, and because all of because 
uh, he's just made of plasticine and he had to balance. Yeah. And so big feet and small head was, was, a, was a good idea. And, and his feet were so big they couldn't leave the ground, so he slid around the place. I should, dem I should demonstrate. Uh, yes. This, this, this is how he moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of, kind of like that. Yeah. And, um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, but, but so it didn't start out too well. But that is true. Like, a lot of th things go through this evolution, and yeah. often the first part in that evolution is a, a terrifying image. You're right, the Simpsons were would look very weird in those really, early episodes. Ugly, yeah. Bungle from Rainbow, go back to him, the yeah. first Bungle yeah. is like he's, like a, someone's ripped the head off a bear and stuck it on a... It's like literally like a dead bear's face. Yeah. Ti <laughs> tiny head. Yeah. Just dead eyes. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, Google it, because it's there. I mean, it'll <laughs> haunt you forever. Yeah. So maybe there's, maybe there's something in your first go that has to be primevally wrong yeah, and evil, past it. Yeah, and then evolve sure. beyond yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, obviously Morph took off. Although I read in the book, in the book you say Morph is still, uh, you haven't made any money from Morph over the whole years. You're still owed, the book claims yeah, that Morph you're is, right. you know, yeah. you're still in debt over Probably. Morph. It's so ridiculous, isn't it? It's so ridiculous. I remember going to the, to our bank manager when, uh, ah, that dates me, when you, when you had a, <laughs> a bank manager to go to. We wanted to borrow, you know, 500 quid or something, you know, and we, and we went in with um, some morph merchandise. This must have been uh, two years in, in and there was, there was like a, a, a very crappy bendy toy morph. Anyone got a bendy toy morph? Oh, they'd be worth a bit now. But, uh, <laughs> um, and something really crappy. And we, and we said, you know, we're going to, ah, oh, this is the future. We, you know, we're going to get into the merchandising racket and we'll be so rich. But it never actually happened. Never. It's weird that that, yeah. I mean, there's still an opportunity for that to happen. I hope Morph so, yeah. is still going. But yeah. it's, that's, it was such an iconic figure. It's amazing that that's. Yeah. Yes, it was kind of not... disappointing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. for we you, said, I'm guessing. Yeah, we saw like I mean, I'm sorry, this is all really ancient history, but with, like things like the Wombles and the, the Mister Men, and we thought, wow, well, well, this is the business to be, and this is great, and it, but it never quite worked. But still, that's not what it's about, is it? <laughs> we, we we love him. We love him for. Well, the, I think that's true, though. Yeah. I mean, you're not you 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 know you've. I love you guys because you've created this massive business, and I've been to the Arden Studios. Yeah. The current ones, we've obviously had lots of different ones over the years. Uh, and it's this huge complex. And, you know, thousands of people working people. for you. Yeah. And it's, you know, but it feels like the, it was never about the money. It was about creating stuff that was, what, what, that was good. And yeah. what I like about my visits to Ardman is everyone, even though they're doing, well, anywhere else in the world would be the, the drudgery yeah. work yeah. of making tiny mouths and then moving them a little bit. Yeah. Everyone is so happy to be there. Yeah. I don't know if, again, you may, they may be in a cult and you've somehow hypnotised. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. people, you know, it feels like you treat your, the people who work for you very well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that you, you take, the ideas work in all directions in that company that people can... Yeah, yes. And, I, I, yes, I mean, I think we do treat them quite well. Yeah, we like to, you know. It's, and uh, I do think... Seriously, that people are entitled, should enjoy what they do if they possibly can, you know, and um, and it works out really well somehow. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. You know, there's lots of, lots of people. It's not just you know uh, me. I don't do anything many most of the time, but but there's lots of you know <laughs> fantastic creative people yeah. doing new things the whole time. But then people want to work for you, and people I'm presuming to gravitate towards you if you yeah. are an animator and you go, I'd love to. Work, which is, I mean, we'll get on to Nick Park, but that's presumably how your Nick worked. He was a student and he yeah. liked what you were doing, and then yeah. you know that was worthwhile getting him yeah. on board, wasn't it? And, and still he now did we, all right. get, we get he was all right. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean that worked out very well. I was, you know, I was saying to you before that I think we've been really lucky and, and, and or and I think our timing's been really good and that's, you know, and that's... I mean, I think there's, there's always true. luck in everything yeah. and, you know, I think what's interesting, again, I think going back to you and David at the beginning of it is that it's, you're bringing different skills to it and you're the yeah. more artistic, creative one and he's the more practical one yeah. and, you know, you needed those two personalities to make that work yeah. and you were, you know, you're... You're all clearly very talented, so yeah. you know that's going to get you a long way. But of course, yeah. there's still luck in, in everyone's yeah. journey. And you, you know, like you say, Vision On could have carried on, and you could have just been doing little the doodles please. for those. Yes, yes. Uh, you'd have been very happy being uh, similar to the uh, Nog in the Nog and Bagpuss Crates. Very happy with part that. Of a yeah. post -gate. Very happy doing that. Um, yeah. I mean, that, I think that was that was probably the game plan was to do 
series for kids, you know, that seemed like the only place there was money, really. And then, and then we met this, this Nick Park, this, this guy, who, um, as, as a very, very shy student, you know, really. And animators, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, it's a very private occupation, you know. Um, and um, a lot of very quiet, you know, introverted kind of people working away in little quiet corners. And so Nick was very quiet and private. And he was, he was at film school and he was making the first Watson and Gromit film, which became a grand day out. And, um, you know, we met him and we thought he was, oh, so, so it was jolly good. You know, but I didn't know he was, he was a total <laughs> superstar. That wasn't, that wasn't clear, but, but, he, but he's a genius. So, yeah. that, so that was a good timing, you know. <laughs> you know right? he, he came to Bristol. You know, he was doing a grand day out. And the way that the business worked, that the film school worked, was he was um, uh, shooting this film really, really slowly. Really slowly. Like, you know, like it had taken him five years or something to get... And it only shot two minutes or something like that. Something quite shocking. And um, <laughs> so we invited him to come to Bristol to finish it. That was basically the, the scheme. Yeah. Uh, and then also to do uh, bits and pieces, you know, including some morph uh, and, inc and including some really terrible characters <laughs> called uh, the Tin Pots. That was, the, they were in series two of... Take heart. Check okay. them out. They're terrible. Really <laughs> awful, awful idea. Really, really bad idea. I'm, I'm blaming Nick for this. But <laughs> his animation was good, but the idea was very bad. Right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and well, it's uh, good to know there have been some failures because there's everything's you know nearly everything's taken off to such an extent. It's good to know there's some bad ones in there. Yeah. 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 Um, I I came one of one of my trips to Arman. You had quite a few comedians come over, oh, and we yeah. all, we all yeah. had to make our own morph. Yes. You showed us how to make yes. a morph. Yeah. Um, I'm not very artistic, yeah. and my morph was, I mean, didn't even look like, like Neanderthal morph. <laughs> but I, I, I thought it would be a good idea to have uh, a series of all the morphs that kids and bad artistic people come and make yeah. in your studios that get thrown yeah. in the bin, and they all live underneath Ardman and they're kind of Quasimodo that's morphs. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Morpheus in the underworld is what I thought we could call it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so if you want to, you know, I've, I've pitched him backstage just a cartoon about a badger, and he's gone with that. Yeah. <laughs> said, have you ever done a badger? He said, no. He said, why don't you do a badger? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Morpheus um, in the Underworld. Morpheus in the Underworld. Very so we've got more, if we've got Morph here, should we, yeah, should we, we meet Morph? Yeah. That's why everyone's yeah, come, yeah, Peter. Yeah, They're no. not interested in us. Let's see. Be quiet or he won't come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a nice, ca that's a nice case he's in. Mm -hmm. well, only the best. Given he hasn't made you any money, that's a lot. How's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Ooh. That's not more. Oh, sorry, that's more. No, no. But, uh, um, but uh, here's the other one. Because, like, yeah, because that is, that is enough, that's more. Are you true? Gonna, we'll tighten that one, that'll do it. I'll just come and I can come. No, thank you. I think the bubble wrap's a bit down market, but there we go. Whoa, there he is. There he is. There he is. It's hard to make, it's hard to make. It's hard to make it that round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, so, and he, yeah, he travels in that little case, and I take him around the world with me, and, uh, you know, he's just, he's just, he is actually just this, he's just plasticine, he's all he is. Yeah. Um, which is amazing, really. It's like, it's so, so uh, cheap. <laughs> you know, like, like in, um, you know, Nick recently made a film, uh, Early Man, our latest yeah. film, and it's got uh, uh, cave persons in it. And, you know, they look kind of jolly and primitive, and they cost thousands to make. You know? right. I mean, ten, tens of thousands to make, whereas this guy costs, that's about... 30p worth of worth of plastic. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, must yeah, love yeah, you, though. Yeah. I mean, how much plastic does Ardman buy in a year? I mean, is it they must have had to open we, a new factory. We, we, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Or did you just reuse it? Whenever we I keep had reusing it. I mean, yeah, that was, uh, he was that was a morph earlier on today right. before I left. Before I left, I squished him up because um, because plastic plasticine isn't was is was a bath company. <laughs> 
the famous Bath invention. Yeah, William Harberts invented it in Bath, and I went. But they closed down now, sadly. They had a um, they had a factory by the canal, and uh, it burned down, and which was unfortunate. And they went bust as well. So it's a shame. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But but now there's another company called New Plast or something that make it. So right. Yeah. And we yeah. And we have at work we have a, a bloody great mixer where we where we make we churn it up and add <laughs> you know add secret ingredients and 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 colors and stuff yeah yeah it's but uh, it's um, yeah. lovely to see him yeah it's good to see him. i i i, I take should have him with my me one along. <laughs> 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 i would animate him but then uh, it'll take forever but we've um, got cameras so we can do it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's the famous instance when you were on Blue Peter quite early on with oh, the, yeah. when, God, the yeah. Sarah Green era, which must have been enjoyable. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and you and you animated something around Sarah Green, and she couldn't believe how long. It yes, took. that's right. Yes, it's te- uh, there's, it's the most you know humiliating old footage from 1980, <laughs> and you know because we were, you know, very uh, inex- we had no experience of you know showing off at all and so to perform for camera like I, you know like she'd say so peter you're making a model and i go yes <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on morph now you know this is awful awful um but then and then we animated and shot i shot like about eight seconds or something in the afternoon which is which is insane i mean now we, we never get anywhere near that now right. but she still said wow it's so slow <laughs> Have you seen the Have you seen that um, fast show sketch that, that they that they they did? They did a, a humorous, insulting fast show sketch about animation. No, did they? Yeah, and it was about, and it was Paul Whitehouse, I guess. And he did the uh, you know, anyone fancy a pint thing. So, so the animator was the animator was going, and then we move him just a little, <laughs> yeah. little bit. And then we, uh, take a picture, and then we move him just a little bit. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. There's a brilliant bit in Parks and... Do you ever watch Parks, Parks and Recreation where yeah, uh, yeah. the guy loses his job and does stop frame animation and he... I know, I didn't oh, see that. He must, didn't he's, see he's, that. He's, made, he's made a little version of himself. It's called Requiem for a Tuesday. Oh, good. And it's, <laughs> and it's got the mute. He, he says, show me what you've got so far. And it's literally like, yeah. stand in the place where you live. And then the guy gets out of bed and that's it. And he goes, it's taken me a month. I thought there was, thought there was way more than this. I've got. He's clearly just had a mental breakdown. So, you know... <laughs> People think you're odd, Peter. I think is what the the comedy world yeah. thinks you're odd. Yes. You know they can just do this on computers now. You don't have to. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Oh, Wasting it. your time, that's Peter. It. That's it. Your Actually, business will never be a success. It, yeah. With it. <laughs> yeah. It is incredibly annoying, though, when people. Oh, I'm sorry. With, with, in computer animation, when they copy stop. Frame, which they sometimes do. Yeah. That really pisses me off. <laughs> get, get your own technique. You know, stick with the <laughs> stick with the computers. They, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they wouldn't do that, by the way. But, <laughs> but, and uh, I was watching this. I rewatched the Sledgehammer video. I mean, I think people might not realise how much of the stuff in the last twenty or thirty years <laughs> comes from your studios. Or, yeah. I mean, I think people maybe know the Sledgehammer. The Sledgehammer video did. Yeah. But it's like it's. You know, I thought, oh, I'm going to watch this and it's going to look dated and it's yeah. going to look weird. And it doesn't really. It looks, it's, there's so much imagination and so much going yeah. on in there. And yeah. that must have taken a long time. And you had Peter Gabriel. Yeah, Peter Gabriel. He being... must have been in with you for, for years. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> living, living on the stairs. It was, um, no, it was, no, six days. Was six it? days, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have to say, it wasn't our idea. There was a guy called, an American guy called Steve Johnson, who, who, whose idea it was. Right. Really smart guy. Um, but they came to us to do it, which was, for which we were eternally grateful. And, and Peter, Peter Gabriel is very smart, very knowledgeable about animation. So he knew what he was doing, uh, and he signed up for it. And the joy is that the way it was made with everything happening in, in, uh, in front of the camera, so there's no electronic... Trickery, you know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was super old school. That was the yeah. funniest thing. You, you could have made it in black and white in 1910, right. you know, but, because it was done the way it was done. But, um, but somehow the world was ready for it. And, and maybe there'd been too much sort of slick stuff on, you know, in pop videos at that time. So, yeah. it, was, so it was done, um, you know. But it's, it's just 
hack, I mean, it makes modern day videos look kind of, you know, there, it was a period where people were sort of doing basically art in pop videos yeah. as well. But there's yeah. so mu much detail in there and there's so many different ideas in yeah. there. And yeah. Some of it's quite, I mean, it starts with sperm swimming yeah, around. Yeah, it starts with sperm. Yeah. One of them looks a bit dead and one of them's <laughs> quite vicarious. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and there's a bit where eggs turn into ch frozen chicken. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Nick, Nick animated that. Did he? He, he, it, it, the, yeah, so the old sledgehammer came down and on an egg, and then, and then, you can watch this at home. Then you get in, you get like a grouse and a partridge and a you know I don't know a pheasant and a chicken appearing for you know a, tw a twelfth of a second each. Right. So their their short lives were kind of immortalized <laughs> right. on uh, in that film. And then and then the, then the dancing chickens and Nick animated them and they were real chickens. They were from Sainsbury's oh, well. and. Uh, <laughs> And, and then the model makers took them and they, and they sh shoved aluminium wire inside the joints. Um, so they were real chickens, but with aluminium wire in. And, and shoving in the wire obviously took some time, took a day. And then, then they went back in there. Yes. And, and, yes. and then, then they had to get one that wasn't back, rotten and get the, another one. Yeah. Then they went back in the fridge overnight. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next day they were brought out of the fridge and glued onto some sticks. And, wow. and then Nick had to animate them. And he wasn't at all at all enthusiastic. <laughs> There's pictures of him wearing, you know, sort of hazmat suit, you know, animating ooh, these nasty, rancid chickens. Uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, and, and they just about survived. Right. I mean, they look so fake. That's the thing. They look like, <laughs> completely like they're made out of plasticine. So yeah, yeah, you, could, yeah. you didn't need to kill and humiliate uh, those no, chickens. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, and, and then there was, because there was those chickens, and then there was, um, some vegetables, there was fruit, wasn't there? There's yeah, yeah. there was kiwi fruit and bananas and stuff dancing with it. And then there was some fish. And and the and the studio smelt like a bazaar in the Far East. It was I mean it was quite it was quite good actually. Like it was all done in summer and all, everything was going off, you know. And and then Peter Gabriel was was great, you know, he had amazing energy. And then at the end, um he he's doing he's still doing his stuff, you know. And these uh, backing singers came in. I don't yep. know where they came from. I have no idea. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, bless them. They, they, they came in, and then, but, and then they, they discovered that they weren't backing singers. They had to, they had to, you know, be animated. So I was saying to them, "Okay, move your hands. Whoop, stop. Yeah, hold it, and, and stick out your hip, and hold it. Yeah, fine, thank you. And now they take half a step. Move your hands a bit more. Stick out your hip a bit more. You know, and and so on. Yeah. And they got, you know." Fairly pissed off, understandably. Yeah. <laughs> and they go, you know, we could just move. We can, you, can just, you can just film this bit. We'll just do a dance. You can film it. Yeah, yeah, that would be too easy. And, <laughs> uh, uh, so then, uh, then at a certain stage, the backing singers end up on chairs, which, you know, never happens in real music videos, right? You know, that would never, that would never happen. The no. sexy backing singers would never end up on chairs, but they did because otherwise they were going to walk out. I think so. <laughs> so, so, so they end up sliding up and down on chairs for a bit. Yeah. It's an amazing video. It's still worth watching. It's still there. Mm. Yeah, it's great. It's still it's there great. on YouTube. Um, oh, I want to give you uh, ten pounds. Oh, brilliant! Because when I was at university, I shoplifted creature comforts. Oh, so there, yeah, that's, that was. I mean, I think you probably. Uh, oh, thanks. Probably got the money. Yeah. Yeah, I should probably be giving it to the shop, but uh, <laughs> uh -huh. you've been, I'll, you've I'll been paid it twice. I'll send it on. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably cost more than 10 quid at the time. Yeah, it's probably yeah, about 25 yeah. quid yeah. for a video yeah, back those then. Those are the days when the, yeah, when the video cost... I'm not sure I even had a video player, Peter. <laughs> that's, that's the, I went through my third year at university. I was having a bit of a breakdown because I hadn't done enough work. So I did steal quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. Never got caught, though, Peter. That's oh, the thing. I never got caught <laughs> to this day. Hey. I write to the police. I go, ha, 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 copper. <laughs> you still ain't got me. <laughs> Cut a little bit off the Creature Comforts video, send it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's very good, though, Creature Comforts. And that was, again, that was uh, quite a pioneering idea to, yeah. to animate stuff that had been recorded. Yeah. You'd done a few things before Creature Comforts. Yeah, it, again, so, like, so we'd done some films based on real voice recordings, yeah? yeah? And, like, the very first one was recorded at a Salvation Army hostel in Bristol. And it's... It's quite good. It's good. It's good. It's quite serious, you know, because, yeah, because no, no, no jokes in it. It was, it was serious and almost like um, a weird animated documentary thing. Yeah. But it was a big experiment and it worked. 
Uh, and then we, we, Dave and I ploughed that far over. We did seven or eight more films like that. And then Nick Park comes along, old smart-ass Nick Park. <laughs> and, and, uh, and he's got a much better idea, which is, to, which is to do it with animals and make it funny. And, you know, and, uh, and it's great. You know, it's, a lovely, it's a lovely film. And, uh, yeah, and, and he... In fact, in fact, his first idea was, was different. His first idea was to go to the zoo and record... Uh, the customers talking about the animals saying, oh, look at that fat one, mum. What's yeah. that one doing? And then he was going to put that into the mouths of the animals looking out of the cage. Okay, yeah. yeah, that was the plan. But, of course, nobody ever said, "What? <laughs> that, look at that fat one, mum. You know, no. you were. And, uh, and he was there. I think, I, think he had like a, I think he had a microphone hidden in, a, in an umbrella, you know, <laughs> like very, uh, very uh, and, and standing awkwardly beside families. <laughs> With his umbrella, trying to record him, and uh, it didn't. That didn't work, uh, and then uh, so that was that was done. But then, but then he had the other idea, which is really smart, to, to interview some of his friends about their lives, and then, uh, and then put that into the mouths of the animals. So the famously, there's that Brazilian jaguar who says, "I need space, I need space," you know, and um, and that was a, a friend of Nick's, a student in in Bristol, a Brazilian guy. Who was a big show off, and, and he did that, and <laughs> yeah. and, and the uh, the uh, the miserable um, gorilla from Belfast. She was like a student teacher, you know, complaining about the weather in Bristol, and uh, and then the, the polar bears uh, operated the corner shop just around the, the corner from our studio. Obviously, <laughs> they weren't polar bears, obviously, well, but they uh, stop the, spoiling <laughs> the magical illusion. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So it was great. It was great. And and, um, and then and then that won an Oscar, which was you know pretty extraordinary. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, amazing, amazing. I mean, Did you go to the? I mean, you've been nominated for a few Oscars. I've been there. Yeah, every you've time there I'm, I'm there. Like, every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people say, "Oh, it's very boring. It's all the same." But I love it. I just I love it. You know, I just because um, because. The Americans, they just do showbiz, don't they? They, they, like, they invented showbiz, didn't they? You know, yeah. they and they do celebrity, and, the, and they do it so wholeheartedly, all the dressing and that. They take it so seriously. The Brits, we, we can't do that. We have to take the piss out of it the whole time. But the Americans don't take the piss. They just enjoy it, and they, and they love it. And, and when you go there, you end up in a... A fabulous traffic jam of limos, like hundreds of limos that are uh, gridlocked to get into the place. And then at a certain stage, there's always a nice moment when you pass the the uh, the, the loony evangelists who sh who who shout at you because obviously uh, showbiz is full of faggots, so they have to shout at you about that, even though you know you're just an instant animator yeah. in the limo. Share some of the faggots out with the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that, that's, that's, that's not that's, fair. That's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then, yeah, and then, and then, and then you walk down the like a corridor of a billion press and people screaming and the cameras are going and not obviously not for us. I, I understand. <laughs> Do they let the animators go in the same way as the proper film stars? <laughs> or is there a back door for you uh, guys you, you, coming through the kitchen, yeah. Peter? <laughs> no, you're not far wrong. You're not far, I mean, yeah, you know, it's funny because you because you know we know. That we have no interest at all, no, absolutely <laughs> not at all. Uh, but so you, so what you do is you, you, you join the red carpet, you get, you, and then you sort of do the old bit of moonwalking. So you get to, <laughs> so you get to do, it, you know, to go along it a few times and, and, and I'll hang out, waiting for somebody famous to come along. And, and yeah, it's good fun, it's good fun. Oh, it's great, marvelous. Fun. I love it. It's marvelous. Let me, I'll ask you an emergency question just because you know hey. <laughs> these people in Bath. Want to see one live? Yep, 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 we did yep. some backstage, which is always available on. Uh, if you're a badger or a dripster, you can get to extra uh, interviews backstage. Um, I've, I've come across this one. This, I'm going to ask it because it's what I've come across. What is your favourite oxide? <laughs> just came up. I'm a big Rust fan, you know. I mean, just <laughs> in my head, right here. It's good that you could answer that. I think a lot of people have struggled with that one. Well done. Um, all right, look, look, this is a question that I don't, I'm not sure I've asked yet. Uh, what was the worst thing a teacher ever said to you, or did to you at school? And was it a games teacher? 
Well, it was. It probably was a game teacher. <laughs> it probably. I was just, you know, so rubbish at games. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah. I was at, sorry, I'm trying to avoid your question. But I was at That's school right. in, in Australia, yes. and they and they played rugby league there, and in Sydney, and I was like, I was a little scrawny little fellow with little pin legs and stuff, like that, <laughs> stick legs, and um, and and the f- pitch was baked because it's 35 degrees, so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's actually like concrete, but with some scratchy grass on top, and all these big kids were knocking me over and you know scraping me on the grass so and then yeah so that was no good yeah and then and then they played cricket and the ball jumps up and hits you on the hand and <laughs> so so no so i was rubbish at, at all sports it's so a, it probably was just now i mean i remember because i was in england obviously and yeah. all my memories of rugby which can't be always the case was the ground was just frozen so there'd be frost on the ground yeah Frozen yeah. solid, and you'd yeah. just be bundled over yeah. <laughs> against, a, a, yeah. you know, not even snow, just horrible cutting yeah. frost. And if, like, and then, yeah, and if you're thin, like I was, you know, thin and weedy and cold and wet. <laughs> oh, horrible, horrible, horrible. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you said, because I was fat, you're saying it was better. It was. <laughs> <laughs> just slightly, <laughs> slightly cushioned to fall. Um, uh, so, yeah, well, and, oh, I mean, there's so much to talk to you about. Oh, my goodness, it's gone so fast already. We've still got some time. Don't worry. Uh, there's, uh, what do I want to talk to you about? Oh, well, let's... I, you, you, uh, I loved the, the, the grommets that you had around Bristol yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and good. they got uh, auctioned off yes. by Tim Wanakut, Yes. Who's, yes. I do not approve of his <laughs> catchphrase, which is yes... Yes, that is not a catchphrase. <laughs> but he's made up for it a little bit because you make, did you make two million pounds of those or something or more than that? I should know. A lot, a lot of millions. A lot of millions. Yeah, yeah. twenty yeah, million. million. It might have been. Not was, that many. But, no. but, but, but on, the, on the night it was two, more than two million. I think. On the yeah. Night. yeah, you're right. You're right. On the night, yes, that was great. I mean, it was amazing. They, um, it's for the, uh, it's for the children's hospital. So you know, you can't help but feel. Good yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing, it's but great. that's that's how. I mean, they're so iconic. It's so they're held in such, you know, affection by people. Yeah, yes, yeah. And, and again, I will say they they are a great design. You know, like like Gromit is a great design. And so they made yeah the first year we made like eighty of the sixty. I can't remember a lot of them, a lot of yeah. them, and they were painted by artists, you know, and and uh, and ordinary people, and and stuck on the streets of Bristol. And, and people just came to enjoy them. And it was so simple, like, you know, uh, made, pe- made everyone happy. And then they flogged them off at the end and people wanted to buy them and paid lots of money. It was just fantastic. You know, it was, it was wonderful um, to see. And then, and, um, and then it goes into the children's hospital and they build, they buy amazing things, you know, super high tech, you know, space age things they can buy. And... Uh, yeah, and so we just feel great about it. I mean, yeah, honestly, it's honestly, just, you should. It just, it, it's amazing. Just end up smiling about it because it was so, you know, it's so nice. And and, and well, is Wallace and Gromit? We've lost Peter Salis. Yes, so indeed. Does, yeah. does that does that mean that's the the, <laughs> the end of Wallace and I, Gromit as well? I or? can't quite believe that. No, I think no. not. No, I, no, I think not. I think well, I think yeah, I'm sure they'll be back. I mean, uh, in fact, you know, hot of the press, I. I can't. I can't reveal anything except that. <laughs> except that. I think that next week Nick is going to like pitch something to me. Oh right, it's okay. I don't, like, like an idea. An idea. You're going to say no. No, yeah. Say, say, I don't. There's no, anything no, like, no, This no, Wallace and Gromit thing's going to catch no up. There's no mileage in that. No, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We, should, we shall see. But yeah, I think they'll be back. Yes. And um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That'll be a good thing. Yeah. So Peter Salis was. Uh, I mean, it was amazing was for that. And, and what an incredible. I, mean, like, I remember we wrote. Uh, a sick, assuming we wrote a sitcom in 1998 and there was an elderly character in it and we and Peter Salas actually said he would do it yeah. and I was thinking oh my god but you know he's so old what if he yeah. what if he dies <laughs> you know <laughs> and he, it seemed like he was going to go on forever even with the curse of Last of the Summer Wine yeah. he still, he still kept going, yeah. seemed to be immortal so yeah. but he was working right into his 90s wasn't he I mean he was, he was yeah. yes something. he did yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he still was, fantastic he was great you know, he was amazing a lovely bloke and um, but latterly, in, he, he suffered from macular degeneration, uh, eyesight thing. Oh, right. Yeah, but, but it didn't stop him. He just he had to have the script written really large. <laughs> yeah. and gi- gigantic words. 
so, but, one word a page. Yeah, sort of thing. <laughs> sort of thing, actually. But 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 you could still do the do the the Wallace yeah. thing, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and it was great. A uh, trooper. I we, they, we, they had a um an opening at a gallery in London one time for uh, some artwork from Wallace and Gromit. I can't remember what it would be. And Peter came along, and so he was the star guest for the opening. Uh, but he didn't do a speech. All he all he did was just say Wallace's lines, like you know, cracking doors, Gromit, and, <laughs> and, and that sort of thing. And absolutely brought the house down. It was yeah. so, it was so, I thought well, that's a great act. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no work at all. Just has to say those lines, and people loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, you lost a lot of the props in a. You had a big. The plaster scene seems to be very, very flammable. <laughs> yeah. uh, because yeah. you lost. You lost. A, you had a big fire at Ardman in two thousand and five. Was yeah. It? Yes. 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 That was a shame. So that you lost a like a lot. We of lost the... a load of good stuff. I didn't. Uh, it was very odd, though. It was very odd because it wasn't in the studio. It was in a um, a, a warehouse that we had uh, uh, in by the by the feeder canal in Bristol. And, um, and I never went to this warehouse before or after. I've never seen it in my life. I've only, just, I've only ever seen the photograph of it with fire leaping out through the roof. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't, it didn't notice very much what had gone until many, many years later when we came to put on an exhibition in France, in Paris. And then, then oh shit, there's no... There are no wrong trousers, you know, they, oh. and, and the uh, yeah, and the pie machine from Chicken Run was gone, and that was a fabulous thing, you know, yeah. and, and the uh, and the plane in which they flew away at the end of Chicken Run that was gone. So, that, in fact, all the chickens were gone, all the chickens were incinerated. Uh, <laughs> chickens sure. haven't come out of this podcast well, have they? <laughs> <laughs> there may be some kind of. <laughs> Avian revenge in oh, the... How dare you do this to us? <laughs> I thought, because the, the, um, the, chi the chicken puppets were much more elaborate than this boy, so they were about this big, and they're uh, uh, silicon and um, resin and stuff, and they've got steel skeletons inside them. So I kind of imagined fancifully that you could sift through the ash <laughs> and find their skeletons, but it was, it was so hot... That they were like vaporized entirely. Oh. So, yeah. So that was that was bad, wasn't it? Yes. That was a, that was, <laughs> that, was, that, was that was a shame. There must be a film in that though. Near Chicken Run. Is that what Chicken Run Two is going to be? Yes. Them all getting <laughs> caught up in a terrible <laughs> fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to run. There is going to be Chicken Run Two. Or is there, there will be. be yeah. There will be. Yeah. We're Are they going to get back in? Is that the? They've got yes. To, yes. This, yes. That's it. I think so. Breaking in is going to be basically the <laughs> gag. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we so those those um, lovely chickens that were all lost in the conflagration um, have now been been recreated quite nicely. Rather beautiful. I mean, they're fantastic. It's so lovely to see them again. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's great. They look lovely. Great designs. Yeah, all we need is a script, then we'll be fine. I can knock you something up. Is, uh, <laughs> I went to the uh, premiere of Chicken Run because I was oh, dating yeah. one of the chickens at the time. <laughs> I, uh, I think though, there's a lot of things I think people wouldn't necessarily know. A lot of adverts, I think, of yes. Aradman that people yeah, yeah. necessarily know. Lots of those, so yeah. the, uh, the little Lurpak. The Lurpak man. The trombonis. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Cuprinol. Like. Robbie Coltrane man. man. Yes, yes, Robbie Coltrane, yeah. What, what are you, you've done quite a few others. What, you, what yeah. would you say your favourites of the adverts oh, God, were? We did, we did lots of uh, lovely polo ones. You know, lots of really, really smart ones for polo. Um, British gas. British gas. Well, yeah. And... No, was just, you're right, nearly. Because it was, it was electric. And that, that was the funny thing, is that everybody thinks it's gas. Like, <laughs> and, which, um, so therefore, as advertising, it could be considered a bit of a dud. But, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was because, the, um, because it was, I think because it was warm and fuzzy, people thought that gas was warm and fuzzy, for some reason, and, and electric was, you know, cold and... Anyway, so that was the whole point. Was to make, the whole point was to make... Electricity fun, yeah. you know, easily turn off and on the ball and stuff. <laughs> uh, see, catchphrases and, uh, and um, that man, the easily turn off and on the ball man, uh, drank in our local pub in in, in Redland in, in Bristol, right. and, uh, and was you know, and was a great talker. I will only say that. And, uh, and and the pandas were my neighbours. They they and and the and the penguins were the the penguins in the electric commercial were the 
previously known as the Polar Bears from the oh, Creature right, Comforts. So, yeah. yeah, they were repurposed. Into Anyone penguins. just walking in to hear this conversation now ago, there's a man on stage who's clearly lost his mind. I live next to the penguins. They were our next door neighbours. They would, they'd talk, they'd been polar bears before. Yeah. <laughs> Fair point. Oh, dear. Uh, well, I think, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's wonderful that you're based in the West Country because a lot of, you know, yeah. it, it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's sort of a jewel in the crown of the West Country, I think, yeah. isn't it? That, that, it. that yeah. most... Most people would have gone to London, would yeah, have gone where, yes. where the action was. But, but I think, do you think that, in a way, has helped you preserve your kind of the, the unique nature of the company? I think it has. I think it has but yeah, helped. Yes, it yeah. has. Yeah, because um, when we were starting out, you know, when we just just done Morph, maybe, or not even before that, and um, our friends, such as they were, we, I mean, didn't, I mean in, in the business, there were very few, said, oh, come to London, you're crazy. There's, you know, there's no passing trade in Bristol, which there wasn't. <laughs> and, and then later, when we started doing TV commercials, the agency people, the London advertising agency people, were gobsmacked at the idea of coming to the West Country. They, they couldn't believe it that we were down here. But I do think it's been a good thing, you know, and um, you feel like, we feel like we're part of... Bristol, yeah. yeah, yes, you know, and, uh, uh, and you know when you, when you get to the station, you ask for our oh, man, the cabbies know where it is without needing the address. That kind of thing is nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, we were David, David, Nick, and I were given um, f freemen of the city yes. with full grazing rights. You right. Know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, goats and sheep, just anywhere you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds it's good. fantastic. Well, I'm you know I, I I'm very proud to. Um, be from, I grew up in the West Country, and I feel like, you know, it does, it sort of is the jewel in our crown. We should be very, yeah. very proud of you. Not people here in Bath, they've got nothing to do with it. So uh, it's just Bristol and below. <laughs> um, we're going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately, but it's been uh, absolutely fantastic to talk to you. Uh, what, what's, is there stuff you can tell us that's coming up beyond uh, Chicken oh, yeah, Run 2? The, the next I thing, know there's some secrets. but the, Yeah, there's... the secrets I can't say, I suppose, no, but the, but the, ne the thing I can say is definitely is Shaun the Sheep 2, the movie. <laughs> and, and uh, yes, indeed. And it's like a sci-fi thing. <laughs> right. So it's, it's great. So it's, it's like an alien comes to the farm and it's called Farmageddon. Which is, as far as I'm concerned, that, that, that sells it right there, I it's think. Very yeah, it's, 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 it's very good. It's very good. Yeah, and do good. buy this book, uh, the Ep Ardman and Epic Journey, Take yeah. One Frame at a Time. It is a, a lovely, lovely story. You've made a morph during that yeah. is not quite there, but <laughs> it's still yeah. better than I could do with full concentration for an hour. You get the idea. Um, you get the idea. Ladies and gentlemen, be a lord and morph. <laughs> Thanks so much. Go and have a drink and a wee. We'll be back with next week's show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>